Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany and I'm so happy to have you joining me for the start of a new room makeover. Today we are going to be doing part one of my master bedroom makeover. I am so excited. I've been talking about this for oh, quite a while now so I'm so glad you're here. Let's go ahead and get started. Danny and I are going to get started by removing all of the items in our bedroom currently. This dresser here is actually a Facebook Marketplace find and I have been dying to refinish it. It doesn't match, but I just have not had the time to do it. So I'm looking forward to getting that looking nicer. I'm going to get all the things off the wall because today we are going to start by uh, painting and my plan is to add board and batten. I've got these two strapping young men to help me today. One is my son Aiden there in the green and the other young man is my daughter's boyfriend Troy and they were very helpful to get that dresser out. It was very heavy and now we're going to take a second to clean behind it and as you can see I had not done that. I don't think I've ever done that since we moved in so that actually wasn't too terrible but um, we're going to get this cleaned up. We're going to go ahead and vacuum it. Like I said, we're going to be doing board and batten here in this bedroom and we've done board and batten in lots of places in my home we started off with the kids bathroom upstairs and I've got a video on that we also did some board and batten by our front door which I have a video for that <laughs> we then also did it in our guest room which you guessed it I've got a video for that too and we also did a similar thing in my family room where we added some beadboard to the wall along with a shelf and a peg rail and you guessed it we've got a video for that too so I have wanted to do something here in this room to make it feel a little bit more cozy uh, Danny and I love that cottage feel kind of bed and breakfast feel so as you can see the room wasn't terrible It just kind of felt empty Unfinished I didn't know what I wanted to do in here. So when our builder was like, hey, I need paint colors I said just paint it the same color as the rest of the downstairs So it is currently pale oak by Sherwin-Williams and or maybe that's Benjamin Moore. I think it's Benjamin Moore um, but we love this color. Like I said, it is everywhere else in my downstairs. However, I wanted something different. I wanted something a little bit darker, a little bit moodier. Uh, so that's what we're going to be going with today. So I'm going to take a second to remove all of the face plates. And here's a look at our paint colors today. We're going to be doing two. One is called balanced beige which is the color you're about to see here it is just a shade darker than accessible beige which is the color we did in our guest room i wanted something just a little bit darker and a little bit moodier so that's what we're going to be using today i am doing this in a semi-gloss because i'm adding this to the board and batten and the color that i do up top will be in a flat so we're going to get started with this now i do not enjoy painting it is one of my least favorite things to do however i feel like it makes the biggest impact in a room so we're going to take a couple minutes now to do our first coat of our balanced beige and i hope you enjoy i tried to make sure i filmed as much as i could because i found this to be incredibly satisfying when i was editing i hope you do too
when I first started editing this video and I added all of the clips in, it was well over five hours. I was mind blown. I have never edited a video that long, but that was even including a bunch of footage that I had lost. So just crazy how much footage we had. This did take about a week to finish just because I never really have like all the time to finish it at once. So uh, it's still a work in progress. Make sure you stay tuned for part two, which will be the decorating. I can't wait. We've got new bedding coming and I've purchased all new pillows and decor. I'm just really excited. So one thing that Danny did before I started painting was he went around the room and measured how far up we were going and drew me a line across the wall. So that's how I knew where to paint to. As you can see there, there's a penciled line across the middle of the wall and that just told me where to paint to. And I also am not being careful along the baseboards because I'm going to be painting those as well. When you do board and batten, it's going to be up to you whether or not you want to paint your baseboards. I personally feel like it doesn't look finished if the baseboards aren't painted as well. So I like to paint those. I'm also planning to paint my bedroom doors and all of the trim around my windows. There is something so beautiful about a painted door or painted window trim. It just looks very, very beautiful. It kind of gives a romantic feel to a home. So that's what I'm going to be doing as well. Again, it's completely up to you on how you plan to do your board and batten. You can leave the baseboards white. That's perfectly fine. You could even paint the wall white and paint your baseboards a different color. Um, you know, whatever works for you. But I wanted that beautiful, seamless look. Look, so I plan to be painting my baseboards as well. I also feel like it just kind of makes the wall look a little larger. When you have one color at the bottom, another in the middle, and then a different one at the top, it does make the space look smaller. So having your baseboards the same color as your board and batten will make the wall feel taller and bigger. So I'm grabbing my cutting, uh, uh, my angled paintbrush here, I'm sorry, and I'm cutting in with the paint. I am one that does not enjoy taping at all. I would rather make a mess and have to clean it up than tape. And I think I'm going to spend the same amount of time, but I just hate taping. <laughs> there is a trick, as you can see here, where you can slide um, a file or a piece of cardstock like I'm using here underneath your baseboard to paint along the bottom. Uh, mine, however, did not fit everywhere, so I could only use it in a couple of areas, but it's fine. I just took my time. This is sped up times 15, so it's going really, really fast, but it did all end up getting done. While I was inside painting, Danny was outside in the garage working on our actual board and batten pieces. So we use MDF when we do this, and we actually went with one eighth of an inch MDF, and that's because I wanted everything to be flush with the trim around my doors and windows. I didn't want it to stick out. And so I just wanted the look of board and batten, but I didn't want it to add a bunch of bulk to the room. So you can do this with regular wood. That's you know traditionally how it's done and it looks very beautiful. Um, however, this MDF is extremely affordable. We're cutting it down into three inch pieces. And I wanna say these boards were like somewhere around the $8 range, maybe eight to $12. I can't really remember, but um, I was able to, we were able to get like seven boards out of each one. So really, really cost effective and it works, you know, beautifully just to give you that look of the board and batten, but without adding all the bulk to your wall, which again, I appreciated. I also didn't want to have to worry about the board and batten um, connecting to the baseboard. I wanted it to just kind of look seamless. And so using the one eighth of an inch, it sat perfectly on top of the baseboard and didn't stick out at all. And it worked out perfectly. Now I'm going to take a second to paint this windowsill. Oh my gosh, the painted window trim is just something else. I love it. I'm staring at it right now while I'm doing this voiceover and I just think it's 
beautiful. As you can see outside, it was very rainy this day. It was really pretty and cool in the room. Um, and in the background there, you'll see that Danny had already started to lay out the boards for you know where we're gonna put them and how much space is gonna need to be in between. There is a whole um, equation to follow when you're doing board and batten. It is, um, it at first seems like it can be a little overwhelming, but it's really, really easy. I will link down below my other videos on how we've done board and batten so you can see how to do that equation and how to measure out where they need to go. Um, it's really, really not hard. I'll also try to find a vlog or blog for you uh, that kind of explains it. So I'm gonna take a second now to just finish up this windowsill. Those windowsills in the background there are also going to get painted. But as you can see, the pale oak is still on the top half of the room. I have not started cutting in with the other color yet. So it looks okay right now, but uh, it's gonna look extra great when we put the other color in. So this is the next morning. I don't know what happened to the footage of me painting the other window. Uh, I'm sorry if that left you feeling unsatisfied. <laughs> Definitely left me feeling that way when I was editing, but we're gonna get into finishing up some trim and painting the doors now. So I'm using this little mini roller to do the larger parts of the door. This just gives it a really smooth finish. So I'm using the angled brush to do um, all of the pretty trim work on the door and then using that miniature roller to do all the other larger areas. Again, I've got this sped up really fast. <laughs> it was taking me a long time, especially around the doorknob because I was a bum and didn't feel like taking it off. <laughs> and I'm just going to, you know, continue painting here. But I am, again, staring at this door while I'm sitting in my room editing this video and I just love the painted door. I think it is so pretty. And I think looking back at my house, if I could change something, I probably would have done white walls with painted trim. I just really love that look. I think it is so very pretty. And I think that the color brings out the beautiful detail on the windowsills and the trim on the door. It's just really, really nice. So we're going to get this painted. I am leaving the outer outside of the door white because it matches the rest of the doors in my house. So I'm only doing parts of the trim around the door and um, making sure that I'm not going you know, too far on the other side because I don't want it to show on the trim. So it worked out perfectly. I also didn't take the TV down yet because Danny was not home and I wasn't going to attempt to do that by myself and break the TV. That would have been terrible. But in the meantime, we're just going to paint the door, paint around it. So this door here goes into my bathroom. So this is the other door that I'm painting. And again, I'm just using the angled brush to cut into all of the details and then the small roller to paint all of the other parts of the door. Now, I did not sand this or do any prep work to the door. I'm just painting right over it. It's up to you if there's something else that you feel should be done um, before you paint it. I don't know if there's a different way, but that's what I did. For the top half of our board and batten, we're actually gonna use my favorite shade of white, and that is Swiss Coffee by Bear. This color was on all of our doors and trim in Las Vegas, and it's just a really pretty warmer white. And not as warm as alabaster, but not as white as something like pure white. 
I really, really love this color. Not as white as like a Chantilly lace. That's a very blue white. So this is definitely a warm white, as you can see there. I would call it like a vanilla ice cream. That's the vibe that it gives me. And I just think it's really, really pretty. For this one, I am using flat. I didn't want it to have any kind of sheen for the top portion. And we're gonna go ahead and get started. Now, this is where you're gonna be able to see what an actual difference the white makes. I feel like it finally brings out that beautiful color of the balanced beige that almost has a slight mauve feel to it in some lights, like what I'm looking at right now. I just think it's so pretty and you couldn't really get a good feel for it until this uh, Swiss coffee went up. So love, love, love this color. Let's go ahead and take a second and get all of this painted. I'm gonna stop talking for a minute I hope you enjoy. this is day 1000 I lost count <laughs> as you can see Danny's actually still got his work clothes on he came home and started working on getting the board and batten up so he's starting off here with the top pieces and he's using that line he already put on the wall to kind of give him his starting point and then he's also got his large yardstick there that has a level as well as this small level now this is where I did lose a bunch of footage. I am so sorry. So you're not going to see him put up all of the board and batten. You're only gonna see a little bit, but like I mentioned, I do have other videos that show how to do this. And he is using a nail gun. That is the easiest little tiny nails so that they do a little damage to our super delicate plaster walls. And um, he's measuring, I wanted there to be one board that went straight down the middle of the back wall. So we figured out how many boards we needed to have and then divided that by, or divided the length of the wall by how many boards we had. And that gave us the number of how much space should be in between each board from center to center. So like I said, it's some math, but it works. 
This is again the next day and Danny is now sanding down our dresser. I will say we did a lot of sanding, a little too much sanding. It got really, really light and kind of yellow. So now I'm working on finding the perfect stain. So stay tuned. This was a $25 find on Facebook Marketplace and it's been a great little dresser to us and I'm happy that we're getting it switched up from this red oak. There's plenty of ways that you can do this. I've seen lots of people just use the easy off. I've seen people use bleach, they sand it down, they've used citrus strip, which is what we did for the dresser that's in our bathroom that we turned into a vanity. So you know, it really is up to you on what you wanna do. Danny felt like this was the fastest and easiest. It just did get a little sanded, <laughs> like a lot sanded. So we're going to find the right color of stain. I'd like it to be, you know, somewhere in the raw wood, you know, natural oak look. So again, this is a, another day, same clothes though. These are painting clothes. So I keep putting on the same things, but now that all the board and batten is up around the room, I'm going to take a second to go in with this small uh, roller to get this all painted. The other thing I didn't film because I did it at night um, was me filling all of the spots. So um, I filled in all of the connectors um, to just kind of give it more of a smooth look. As you can see there, I used wood fillers. So that's what I did. And then I did go in and sand it. And then again, I had to vacuum it. So I did all of that off camera. And now I'm just going to get all of our boards painted and we are almost done. We're going to add some last trim and we're going to be done with part one very, very soon. see what I meant when I said it kind of needed to have the baseboards painted I just feel like if those baseboards were white it would have made that wall look really small so I love that painted baseboard it was a pain in the neck let me tell you but it just looks so beautiful Finally, Danny is going in with this top piece of trim here. He measured how deep the window, I'm sorry, the door frames are and tried to cut down a two by four to match so that it would be as flush as possible. And he did a really beautiful job. This just gives it that finished look. This part isn't necessary. You could stop with what you've got, but adding just this one little one by one board gives it such a finished look. I absolutely love it. I will say the one thing we didn't do was go in and caulk it afterward. We should have, but I was so done <laughs> at this point. This was literally the last day we'd been doing it for so long. I was just ready to have it done. I still needed to paint this trim and touch up all of the white. So Danny got this up as quickly as possible so that I can get the rest of it painted.
And like I mentioned, the last little thing to do was to paint all of this top trim. I'm only gonna show you a little bit here because I think you've seen enough painting. I painted this trim and then went back in and touched up all of the Swiss coffee up above while Danny and I watched the latest episode of Ted Lasso. It was a great way to finish up this project before coming in and getting all the decorating done. I hope you guys enjoyed part one of our master bedroom makeover. I cannot wait for you to see part two. Make sure you come back next week so that you can check that out. I am really excited for what we're going to do in here. I've got some beautiful curtains. Like I said, new bedding. I'm also working on getting some new nightstands, some ones that match. Ours do not. I'd also like to get rid of the white. So make sure you come back. And of course, the last thing I'll be doing is finding the perfect stain for that dresser. So I hope you guys have a fabulous day. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.